Good morning. It's Councillor Glenn Gower here. It is Saturday morning, July the 16th. I think it's the 16th. Uh, this morning, I'm, well, as you can see, I'm here in front of the Amberwood Village sign. Uh, this is Springbrook in Hazeldean. I wanted to come here today. I'll get out of the way. Just have a look at this here. Um, over the past few weeks, volunteers here in the community have just done an incredible job at uh, beautifying the Amberwood Village sign. Some great work in the garden. Um, there are volunteers from a number of the condo associations here who uh, have taken the time to come out, uh, donate their time, and keep this looking great. So a number of the condo associations, a number of individuals and, and members of the Amberwood Village Residents Association have been helping out with this. Some people even hauling out uh, big jugs of, of water to help keep uh, keep the plants happy and healthy. So thank you to everyone. Um, who's been helping out and getting involved and uh, working on uh, on the Amberwood Village side. And I know across our whole community here in Stittsville, there are a lot of these entry signs like this and a lot of unsung heroes, some great volunteers who take the time to keep our community looking great. So thank you to you as well. Uh, some updates today. Uh, I'll look back at the week uh, that, that was. Uh, I'll highlight a few things from my website and uh, I'll talk a bit about fare free transit and some reminders as well and even some activities you might want to check out in and around the community in the coming days. Uh, so first of all, I want to thank everyone who uh, took part in a test drive at the EV Experience. So on Tuesday evening, Enviro Center and the Electric Vehicle Council of Ottawa set up a, a demo station basically. They had nine or ten electric and invited the community to come out and try it out. A uh, really great turnout and a great opportunity to check out, uh, get your questions answered about electric vehicles. So thank you to Enviro Center and Evco for that. Uh, they may be doing some more events this summer in other locations, so if you're interested in that, check out the Enviro, Enviro Center website, which I believe is envirocenter.ca. Uh, we had some COVID news from the province this week. They are allowing anyone over 18 uh, to go back there we are uh, so COVID-19 news from the province this week uh, they are allowing anyone in province of Ontario over 18 to get a fourth dose or a second booster um, and to get those shots you can go to a local pharmacy uh, you can go to the Ottawa Public Health website and find a local community clinic or you can go to the provincial COVID-19 website and book an appointment there as well uh, especially people who are high risk, considered high risk, this is a great opportunity to get that fourth dose. And if you haven't had a third dose or a second dose or even a first dose, you can still go to any pharmacy or go to one of the community clinics and they'll be able to help you out there. And then this week we'll be waiting for more information about uh, uh, young children. So uh, kids under five, I believe it is, between six months and five years. We're expecting some news this week about vaccine eligibility and availability, so I will share information on my website as soon as I get it from the province. Uh, we're continuing to give away free wood chips at the Maple Grove Depot. This is wood chips from a lot of the trees that have been removed from curbside and local parks and pathways. So uh, please take advantage of that. It's open 24 seven, you just drive up. It's Maple Grove Road, just a little bit east of Putmar Drive. So uh, please uh, help yourselves. Um, this weekend, a cruise, we're working on the pathway between Amberwood and Forest Creek, getting some of that cleanup done. Uh, so that cleanup continues. And please, if you see a tree in a park or along the pathway that you believe is a hazard, please call 311. Our city staff want to know about that right away so that we can get that cleaned up and keep our community safe. Um, so updates from my website, a whole bunch of things this week. We post things on my website nearly every single day. So you don't have to wait till Saturdays to get updates about the community. Just go to glengower.ca. There are engagement opportunities, there are events, uh, there's information and updates about what's happening around Spitzville. So a few things, uh, there's information about what's called this, the Infrastructure Management Plan at the city. Uh, we're doing this big update to basically determine what we need to do to provide safe drinking water, stormwater management, and wastewater management as the city continues to grow. So if you're interested in that aspect of city planning, check out my website and how you can get involved and find out what's planned and share your feedback. It's known as the IMP, Infrastructure Management Plan. 
uh, we've got a great profile of Shiva Yan. She's a Spitzville psychotherapist and a really nice story about uh, how she helped a, a newcomer. And this is an article that comes from the Ottawa Local Immigrant Partnership, so check that out. There's an article about there about driveway extensions. If you're thinking about expanding your driveway, know the rules. So we've got some tips on my website that you should know. Also, why we have rules in place about driveway expansion. So check that out. Uh, there's an article up, up there about wild parsnips. So the city has now finished spraying for wild parsnip as part of the 2022 wild parsnip, uh, parsnip treatment program. Uh, there's some mowing that'll happen as well to cut that back. But if you do see a uh, public area with wild parsnip that you're concerned about, please call 311. So while the spraying is finished, we could add that to the list for next year. And uh, uh, it could be possible as well to cut that back with our city crews. I've got an update on a Pioneer Plains splash pad. This is not a good update. Uh, there's an issue with the solar panel that powers the splash pad, and it's gonna be at least another couple of weeks for that to open. Uh, I know that kids and families in Jackson Trails and Potterski have been waiting a long time to have that splash pad up and running. We're working through everything we can to get it up as soon as possible. So we apologize for that delay. There's a new splash pad, however, that did open on Mays Street. That's off of Maple Grove Road, actually not, not far from that Maple Grove Depot, uh, just a little bit east of the Fairwinds community. Uh, you can see a list of splash pads across our community of Spitzville on my website. Uh, go to glengower.ca and search for splash pads, and you'll see that come up. Uh, on my website, there's information about the vacant unit tax. If you have any questions and curious if your property might uh, be considered a vacant unit, please check out the vacant unit tax information. And uh, the last thing I wanted to mention about my website is I did post my thoughts about this fair, free transit debate that's been happening over the past week. Um, I do not support across the board fair, free transit, so make sure I'm clear on that one. Um, I think I talked a little bit about this last week, so here's some of the numbers. This year, uh, fares are covering $166 million in the operating cost for OC Transpo. Pre-pandemic in 2019, they covered $209 million, so it's down now because we have uh, lower ridership. What we do is we target that fares should cover 55% of the cost to run transit, and your property tax covers the other 45%. Property taxes right now are covering a lot more than that because of the uh, because of the ridership uh, lower ridership. Anyways, if uh, long story short, if we were to shift all of that fare over to the property tax, it would mean an average increase to your tax bill of 12 percent, or 930 dollars, if you have a home that's assessed at 800 thousand dollars. So a 930 dollar hit to the tax bill which I don't think is accessible to, to bump taxes up by that much. Uh, that's an incredible jump. And I know one of the reasons people are talking about fair free transit is an equity issue. Well, I think we would be creating a different equity issue if all of a sudden we're, we're boosting property taxes by that amount. It's not everyone, in fact, many people in our community would not be able to afford that. Now, the main reason, though, that I don't support a fair increase is because I don't think that is the biggest barrier to getting people on the bus. I think people, to get them on the bus, we need transit service that is more frequent and more reliable. Um, that's the most important thing. We have so many uh, uh, people, I think, who would like to use the bus more in Stittsville or who would use the bus more, but the service just isn't there. Now, we do have to invest money to do that, but uh, I don't think uh, investing in free transit is the way uh, to improve our system. Anyhow, I've shared lots of ideas on my website, glengower.ca, and we certainly do need more investment in transit. Uh, some of that may come from, uh, from property taxes, as it does now. Uh, some of it could come from other sources of revenue, um, uh, a parking surcharge, for example. Uh, some of it could come from other levels of government. The province used to fund a significantly higher portion of operating costs than they do now. So perhaps those are some solutions. Um, the other thing too is uh, I have supported some targeted fare-based incentives to get people on transit. For example, uh, we have seniors days on Wednesdays and Sundays where transit is free. We are piloting 
uh, free transit for kids under 12, I believe it is, to see how that affects ridership and also helps with uh, accessibility and equity as well. And uh, we have frozen the Equipass for the past few years, which is the pass that, that, that is available to lower income individuals. So um, it's not that we can never do free transit, or there aren't circumstances where it makes sense, but across the board free transit and putting that cost on your tax bill does not make a lot of sense to me. Okay, I will stop on the free transit, get back on track here. Um, reminders, reminders, reminders. Dirt bikes and ATVs, not allowed on the Trans-Canada Trail. If you see this, you can call 911 because that's a safety risk. Having fast-moving motorized vehicles up against cyclists and pedestrians, not a good idea. So if you see dirt bikes and ATVs, call 911. If you own an e-scooter, remember you're not allowed to drive those e-scooters on a sidewalk. Uh, they must be on a bike lane or on a recreation path, but not on sidewalks. And uh, cyclists, please uh, be courteous towards pedestrians. Make sure you have a bell on your bike and use that bell when you're passing people on the Trans-Canada Trail, for example. And just everyone, whether you're a cyclist, a pedestrian, a driver, uh, be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, follow the speed limits. Come to a full stop at stop signs. And please take extra care on the roads because we really need everybody uh, acting responsibly to keep people safe. And uh, last reminder today is call 311 if you have a uh, anything, graffiti that you see at a local park, branches as I mentioned that need cut back, um, anything city related, call 311. They have that number manned 70, 20, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and it's a great way to alert staff so they can act as quickly as possible for your concerns. I told you I had a few activities to tell you about. One of them is um, uh, Saturday, our, our weekly market at Holy Spirit Parish at Shea and Abbott Street. That's on today, I believe, from 10 to 2. And then tomorrow, there's the weekly farmer's market at Village Square Park at the barn next to Village Square Park. Um, the library has a lot of programming on this summer for families kids, seniors, people of all ages. There is a summer reading club for kids. There's also a, a creative writing teen group. Uh, so check that out. And if you're down near the library, head just a little bit further towards Brigade Street and uh, you will come across the free little art gallery. It's a uh, like one of those free little libraries. You can actually donate or uh, take one of the miniature art pieces that's on display. It's really neat. Just go and have a look and uh, really interesting uh, destination on your walk on the south part of Stittsville, Maine. I hope you do get out this weekend to explore your community, enjoy all the beautiful paths and green spaces that we do have here in Stittsville. And thank you so much for watching. I've been meeting a lot of you over the past few weeks and many of you are mentioning how you tune in every Saturday morning for these updates. I uh, really appreciate that. Thank you for staying up to date and informed about our community. Have a great week. I'll talk to you next Saturday. Bye-bye.